Well, while I was looking through my drawer of old canes, I found this cane and I thought, wow, this will be an easy one to put on a... This was a uh, spice jar. And uh, it just needs to be woke up and warmed up so it'll all move. And it needs to be a little bit fatter and a little bit shorter. Fatter this way and shorter this way. So that's what we're going to do. And take four slices and put it on the jar is my intent. Now, what in the world I'm doing with a cane component this large, I have no idea. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what I was doing with it. I don't remember making it, but I thought, you know, it, it just made look really cool on one of these spice bottles. So I'm just going to move it around a little bit because I don't want to reduce it too much, just enough to get it to fit. And I need three inches in length to go from the bottom to the top here and an inch and a half to go from the side of this corner to the side of this corner because I'm not going to put a um, edging on it like I did the last one so this one needs to touch design by design on the corners now let me uh, let me roll this out just a little bit. This ends quite a bit thicker. And I am going to use the Sculpey Edge and Pearl tools and put designs on this in white. And I think I'm going to put some white mica on top of the white Primo just to give it a little bit of shine. I don't want a whole lot of shine. The solid one is a square bender used just like the round cane benders and this is one of the largest cane benders. And the square pairs are hollow and they stack in each other. Doing your canes, whether they be new, old, fresh, whatever, very simple and very straight and helps them to move at the same place. Now, all of the caning tools that I use in my videos are from Teresa Salgado at Tiny Pandora. And I know for a fact, after her move and the pandemic and stuff, she's had some problems getting in her um, acrylic tools because of everything that's gone on in the last couple of years with everything. But now they're restocked. So she's got her cane benders, her square pairs, her cane bend, her square benders. Uh, she's got one of the most popular sets in is her Easy Cuff bracelet kits. She had had a hard time getting those for a while. But now she's all stocked up and I'll leave a link below in the description of where her shop is. And if you plan on doing a lot of caning and you don't want the distortion or you want caning made easier, you need the caning tools. That's when I really started caning. So that's actually lucky. That's going to give me some width that I need. I didn't need the length. So let's move it out. And you can see you put equal pressure on your square benders or square pairs. And it moves the cane. I if I can get you to see this without my hands being in the way. It moves the cane all at once. So it moves the inside after it's woke up. It has to be warmed up in order to move like that. So let's see where we are now. One, two, three. Still a little bit. And we 
have our inch and a half now. Now let's get our three inches. This will not fit up here on my work surface. So let me get my uh, slices in my cane. And I'll come back and we'll attach them. And then we'll work on the etch and pearl tools. This is an easy one. So get a cane, make a cane, put some blends together or something and join along. Be right back. Okay, I have my slices cut here. And uh, after getting this cut and feeling it and playing with it, this is souffle. Um, I wasn't quite sure to begin with, but this is definitely souffle, and souffle is great to cane with. But I put the first one on to see where it would go, and I think this is going to look rather cool. I just still don't know what it was from. Anyhow, I cut out a couple of extra slices. Of course, you have to... Uh, get your slices even all the way through and these two were not but I have a lid that um, I need to cut out and cover and I'm going to use some of these to cover the top of the lid and also to uh, put uh, around the edge of the lid okay let's match this up and I'm going to match it up with the stripe side right here and you can stretch this and you can use your blade the dull side to flatten it out and get it straight I'm going to take a small cane bender If you've never seen Teresa's caning tools, the one I was using earlier, square pairs and square benders. And these round ones are the cane benders. And they come in real handy for many different things. Especially, I find that if I don't have a huge heavy roller in my hand, then I have a tendency not to put too much pressure on it and um, to overwork it. I guess it's because it's smaller. I need to squish those pieces right there together. And if you've noticed, I haven't um, put any glue, liquid clay, or anything underneath this because I'm going to cover the glass all the way around. Only thing I don't want are air bubbles underneath the clay. Because as you know, air bubbles will expand and rise to the top when they get heated. And we don't want that, nor do we need it. Because it would pop our clay off of our bottle. Now normally I don't come up this high with this on these bottles because I couldn't tell you how many of these I've done. But I like this solid blue up here. That darker, deeper blue. So I decided to keep it there and bring the sides up on this just a little bit more than usual. Normally I stop it right here where the sides seem to stop. Okay, see how easy this is? We're half done with the cane going on the bottle. Let me make sure this is straight. Now this is the other side, not the stripey side. Going on and matching up here. And just look for places that have identification marks where you can match them up. This one right here is this little line coming up, you know, little arrows. So this much of it's done.
These just make such cool little gifts. And if you save them, okay, so that's what my lid's going to look like. And I think that looks cool. Now, I'm going to attach my clay to my tin, my metal. And I, before I started with any of this, I put, um, I sprayed alcohol on the bottle, the glass, the tin, everything, and cleaned up, cleaned it up and put uh, my, uh, got all the oils and stuff on it, off of it from your hands and fingers. Okay, that was well bond glue. It is bakeable. I love to use it on metal and wood to attach clay, whether it's baked clay or raw clay, either one. I'm going to roll it out to get my air bubbles out of it so I could get a better cut on cutting it off here on the sides. Just going to take my craft knife and go right around the edge. I want that edge smooth so my clay is not overlapping. Okay, I have that part on the top of my lid and cut off all the way around there. Now I'm going to straighten this piece out. Okay, I got two full pieces out of that. Before I put any glue on, let me see how far it's going to go. Just going to take my finger and spread it around. And that one sort of matches up there. Well, what luck is this? Had no clue it would match up like this or sort of match up. It sort of looks like it's meant to be, so that's a good thing. Okay, make sure you don't have any glue on top of there. That glue will come out and it's clear so you won't be able to see it. Okay, let's move all this out of the way. Okay, our bottle's done until we come to the etch and pearl part. Look how cute that turned out. Just a crazy cane that I just thought would look cool on a bottle. So, let me get my hands clean and get the glue off of them and the glue off of all my tools and come back and we'll start on the etching pearls. So I'll be right back. Okay, this is a micro pearl from Pearl X and I want quite a bit on here. And I'm going to put it on with this brush. And I just, if you have some white pearl clay and you'd rather use it or a color that goes with your cane, by all means do that. I just wanted a um, little bit of sparkle with this. And if I seal it at all, I'm going to use a um, Sculpey glaze probably on it because I really don't want it shiny, shiny like a um, UV resin or deep shine or anything on it like that. I don't want it shiny. So what I'm going to do... Here's my Pearl X on there. You can see it's a little bit pearlized. And I have rolled this out on a number two on my Atlas, which is next to the thickest. And let me start with the largest etch and pearl. And as you can see, it's got just that little pearl shape in there. 
Let me slide it out. There we go. It's not all the way filled. Just clean off your edges. Let's start on the lid. And I have no idea where I'm going with this, so we'll see. You press it down and you turn it and it releases and you've got your pearl shape on there. That's how cool this is. Let's do another large one. I'm just pressing down and turning a little bit and it comes right out. not filled up. Make sure it's filled up in there to get your whole pearl. That pearl came out. And make sure your sides are cleaned off. Let's put this one right here. Okay, there's three that size. Let's get the medium size one. And if you're setting rhinestones, which I'm not about doing because I love the rhinestones and I love the bling. But this just didn't seem to call for rhinestones. So I'm not putting the rhinestones in there. But if you were to, these etch and pearl tools that gives you that little bit of height on your circles is just perfect. Okay, let's continue. I'm just putting these on here. No certain place, no certain way. What I think looks cool, that's what I'm going with. But I do try to keep them an odd number. Um, in all of my art classes over the years, Odd number seems to attract the eyes better, or I can comprehend it better. And in your design, it works better. So remember, see we have one, two, three, four. I'm only going to put one more here. And there's the five on that side. I don't think I'm going to put any around the edge because I don't want them interfering with um, coming off while you're trying to turn your jar lid. Let me put some of these little ones down this little stripe here. I'm just looking at what designs are on here and what I think would look good where. and. Uh, no rhyme or reason, just like playtime. Let's see if I can't get two more. I love these little dots. They're just so little and delicate. And this tool just makes them so simple to do. Do I want it up there? Do I want it down? I want it down here, I think. And I think that's all I'm adding. I'm not putting any um, of the Etch and Pearl pearls on this type of design on here. And uh, I had a little bit of camera problems there, so I had to deal with those so while I was dealing with those I decided that uh, this was like what do we all say watching paint dry once you know how to do this it's easy so I've started with the designs on here I didn't fill in any of these um, bullseyes at all and I just made different designs followed that seam up through there haven't done that side yet I've started on this one 
and I just love how you can go from the largest ones to the small ones with the medium size in the middle and they turn out perfect every time as long as you get your clay in there here's my clay into the circle and just run your fingers around the edge so there's nothing hanging over the edge and let's see I don't really want to do this one where I did that one so let's um, let's do them up here instead of going around the dark blue this time and this is the largest one And you just need to make sure that your little circle in there is full. And it's easier to scrape it off your tile. Work on a tile. It's easier to scrape it off of the tile. And just put it on your clay. And just barely press down and turn it. Just make sure your edges are cleaned off is one of the biggest things i found. Because if you don't, you don't get your perfect little circle. Let's go to the smaller one. Follow down this line a little bit with the smaller one. This is the medium size one. And let's go in with my favorite little one. And you've got to watch it on this side now. I've laid those down and got those flat. While I was working on the other side. I'm going to go around and clean those edges off now. That one's smooth. My clay is so sticky. I think I will hold it up and work on it now. Because I don't want to flatten any of the other edges. Let's start down here and go up. Just make sure that you have your clay in all of the hole. I think that's all on that side. Let me, <coughs> let me do this side real quick. I've got the big ones going up the side. Got little bits of clay hanging on where I don't want it. Um, I haven't gone up the center right here except on that other side which is opposite of this one so I guess we could do a similar design on this sign.
and I just take my tool and push it down in the clay and usually my clay is not this soft but it's a good thing it's soft because it's really holding on to the cane slices quite well let me get my medium sized one just ever so often clean off your clay it's easier to get it in and slide it out if it's cleaned off but with the mica powder being on the top of the clay it makes it come out of your tool easy uh, sometimes if your clay is real sticky you may need to use uh, some cornstarch on top of your clay but uh, this is working out quite well with the underneath side being so sticky because it's sticking quite well And these little pearls just add that simple elegance to stuff and you can do them in a uh, design in different colors they're wonderful to do mandalas with I wish uh, Sculpey would come out with a couple more sizes One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I can get eleven going down through here. I think I'm done. I want my hand off. But we're almost finished. And if you've watched my uh, videos before, there's one more thing I need to do. And I think you know what it is. I'm going to go back in and clean up some of these where this is so soft. But my one thing left to do is I'm going to take a little slice of this dark blue clay. This is my little ample stamp. I'm apples, as you know. And I'm going to take my apple stamp and make my apple impression. Cut it out again where I distorted my circle. Usually I do my stamp first and then do my circle. And I'm going back in and get some of my mica powder I have. I may have enough on but now I clean my brush. What do you know? little bit of mica on my apple and of course it went over here's my apple stamp with my mica powder and it went over the edge a little bit so I'm going in with some scotch tape and just gently rub it over the surface and pull that extra mica powder off of there you see if it will focus there you go
even if you don't know what your cane was for when you originally made it, it doesn't matter. Use it, reshape it, reuse it, and make something new out of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I will see you next week. Thanks so much for watching and supporting me. I truly, truly appreciate it. So you all have a safe week. Blessings.